and documented. And these informations were not collected by the city, but we collected them in the university as, as uh, research pro projects. And we looked at Copenhagen as our laboratory where we could study how planning has influenced people. And we published it. And after a little while, the politicians and the city planners came running over to university every other moment saying, have you got new data? Have you got new information? And what we were able to tell was that whenever they did improvements, there were more people coming, there were more people walking, people were more happy, even the shops were more happy. And when I resigned from university because I was too bloody old, <laughs> I got this letter from the mayor saying, if you guys in university had not given us all this data about the people in the city, we politicians would never have dared to make Copenhagen the most livable city in the world. So the lesson here is that the data has been very instrumental in convincing each other and the businessmen and whoever was doubting that these schemes actually worked uh, and the city got better for it. Um, I guess it's, I'll just see if that is funny. This is very funny. <laughs> but, you know, something must be wrong with the slides. But anyway, in 1962, they, they closed the mains in Copenhagen for, for traffic, and this was how it looked. Now, 52 years later, this is what has been done in Copenhagen to improve the situation for pedestrians and public life. It's a really a, a remarkable uh, effort. Um, and because we have studied throughout this period, we also have seen how the, ch the character of life has changed, that from 100 years ago, whatever, then came in the 60s, it was something making a shopping mall in the city. But now, city is very much something about enjoyment, recreation, whatever. It gets more and more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is better. Looking back now. Looking back now. Yeah, we can take one more. Yeah. Looking back now, I can see that these 50 years of development of the people seen in, in the city of Copenhagen, it falls in a number of of, 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 of periods which reflects the development in society. The first period was the 20 years from 60 to 80 where they were they made pedestrian streets where you can walk and promenade and that was good for walking and good for, for retail and whatever. So they made streets. But then the next phase we can see it was widened not only about walking, but also about sitting down, enjoying the city, having, having some recreation. And that was when the cappuccino culture started to explode. <coughs> we, we were told Copenhagen we could never have cappuccino because Copenhagen was too cold. Also, we were told that if dust came into cappuccino, you will die. <laughs> we had to tell them that if dust in cappuccino was a reason for dying, there would be no French and Spanish and, and no Italians left. Uh, so it was after a while allowed, but then they said there will never, there'll never be any cappuccino culture in Denmark. It's too cold. Some people then set out a few tears, and they were out for one month and two months. Now they're out for 12 months. And now we have about 10,000 cafe chairs in Copenhagen and they are out just about 12 months a year because the smoking laws have abolished the winter situation, <laughs> which is very fortunate. But we can see that we sort of started and again people have more leisure time, they have a bit better economy and they've been out traveling and seen nice cities and they wanted to have it nice where they were. So, and then we are now well into phase three. That is that the keywords are, it should be playful, there should be sports, it should be activities. We can let young artists have fun with colors and with all kinds of challenges 
for um, playgrounds for the grown-ups and playgrounds for the smaller ones. But we can see. So now they don't. They do for walking and for sitting and staying and recreation and for fun and joyfulness and sports and recreation. And they do more and more and more. Um, this is something about the cappuccino culture that is from 86 to 2005. Now we are well over 10,000 seats in Copenhagen. And this is an interesting thing which also we have been able to find that there are almost as much activity on Saturdays and Sundays as there are on weekdays. Because now when you are not going to work or not going to shop, uh, you are going to city to have a good time to see what's going on for cultural whatever or just to promenade. Um, Copenhagen since 2009 has an official city policy passed in the city council. Mm. We will be the best city for people in the world. They have put down a number of goals and the overriding goal and the overriding philosophy here is we realize that it is good for a society if people come out of their houses and if it's good for people if they walk more or move more and it's also good for society if they spend more time in our shared spaces so it's something about we shall walk 20% more we shall spend 20% more time in parks and squares and we shall make these facilities so that people feel invited to spend more time whatever and also there should be a general satisfaction with the public spaces of this city. This is all in this one, and the major thing is it's good for democracy and good for safety and good for social inclusion in a society if people meet face to face in some wonderful shared spaces. And this again leads into the fourth phase of all this. That is now is not only the city center which should be nice. Now the whole bloody city shall be nice. And we shall go through the whole city and make sure that people are treated gently. One of the things I always found in Australian cities as just a little thing, I have in, in this book of mine a, 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 a catalog of 15 smart things traffic engineers invented to make it less attractive to be pedestrian and to uh, one of them is the Australian that you have to apply to get across the street. That, that I never understood why you have no computers down here. Because all the rest they can figure it out and they know exactly what they can do. But here you have to feel small and you have to apply every time you come to a crossing. Um, but n not so in Copenhagen. Uh, on, the, uh, on the other side they change all the streets from this configuration to this, they never make one-way streets. It's all two-way streets and two lanes and a good median where you can rest if you are old until you continue with street trees, with bicycle lanes. And this street is much more beautiful. It's much more safe. And it can take just about the same amount of cars because modern traffic engineers are much smarter than the brutal guys we had in the 70s and 80s. And this is another little sign of this thing which makes life better. And I love this thing. The one thing is that when you have a smaller street going into a bigger street, you take the sidewalk across the small street and you take the bicycle lanes across. You can narrow the small street and have a bench and have a tree. And that's fine. And that's something about showing respect for pedestrians and bicyclists. They're sort of people also as good as any guy in a Mercedes Benz. But then I talked to my daughter and she said, Oh, Baba, you wouldn't realize how wonderful it is with these new things they've done in our area. Because now Laura, who's my grandchild, who's seven, or she was seven here, she's seven because now she can walk all the way to school because she can stay on the sidewalk all the way to school instead of having to cross four or five streets which is a no-no when you're seven but if you can walk with your girlfriends on the sidewalk that's fine little difference great respect for people this is the kind of, of policy 
uh, about, which makes me happy about being in Copenhagen and having my grandchildren. Also at the same time, they've developed a complete system for bicycling, uh, and it is proper bicycle lanes with curb here and there. It's all over the city, and gradually it has developed into a transport system. Every third family with children in Copenhagen, they have a cargo bike where they can bring children to, to events and to kindergarten and whatever you can transport anything on a bicycle. And they have made the system gradually safer and safer and safer. And it's completely citywide now, so you can go everywhere and it is safe in all the crossings which always were the problems. You have you have a special crossings and gimmicks like the green for the bikes come out before the green for the cars, etc. To have the bicycle system really working, it shall work together with the other means of transportation. So all car taxis will have to take two cars, two two bikes, and you can bring your bike for free in the train and in the metro, and that is very, very popular. And uh, that makes an old guy like me, when I and my wife are going out to my son, 25 kilometers away, we can pedal down to the station and take the bike on the train for 25, 3 kilometers, and then bike another kilometer out to, to that family, and then we won't have to charge the car. Um, over the years in Copenhagen, we've seen a bicycle culture develop, but really it's become...